Hey everybody, it's Nell with Little Yellow House Crafts. Welcome back to my channel. Um, as promised, I am here with a special edition video all about my felt Christmas ornaments that I finished uh, in December. I know there's a lot of excitement about these, so I am excited to get to do this uh, special video just all about them. I'm going to show you the ornaments that I have finished. I'm going to show you how the patterns work um, so that if you want to do these yourself, you can um, maybe have some details of the kinds of things you're going to need. Um, I, I put them in this cute little binder she when you when you purchase the patterns from her um she gives you these for the binder and you can see it's quite thick and i have little tabbies showing all the different days so anyway i've done this because i plan to make several more sets of these for family members and so i wanted to keep them in a nice binder so i'll take you through that i will also take you through my supplies and the kinds of things that i discovered i needed um for making these so that if again if you want to do these at some point in the future you can um, maybe go into it kind of knowing what you're going to need. Um, first and foremost, these are felt ornament patterns designed by Larissa Holland. Larissa Holland, she has an Etsy shop that I will link uh, in the description box. And um, her Etsy shop is called MMM Crafts all one word, mm, crafts or MMM crafts. She also has a blog, mmmcrafts.blogspot.com where she has tons of more information about colorways when you're doing this. So I will link her blog as well and the blog posts about this because I used her blog extensively. Her blog is where I found the instructions for my particular colorway, which colors to use, where, what colors threat, what color, uh, threads, flosses that I needed for them. So I used her Etsy shop to purchase everything, but I used her blog while I was assembling them because I needed all of that information. So I will link all of that down below. She's an incredible designer. If you go to her Etsy shop, you're going to see she has like Santa and Mrs. Claus and Elf um, felt ornaments that are to die for. She's working on a series right now that is um, a Christmas Carol. I think so far she has Scrooge and Jacob Marley, and I think she has one of the ghosts. I think she has the ghost of Christmas past. Um, but regardless, you're gonna see, she is an incredible designer. She's so talented. And uh, felt ornaments, she's just like the guru to me. She knows everything. Um, about her patterns, her patterns are so, detailed. I will go through them with you later to just kind of show you what they look like. She tells you everything you need to know. Um, but yes, I just wanted to recognize Larissa Holland um, before I get into this because she is an amazing designer. This was my first time doing any kind of felt ornaments and you're going to see because of her instructions and how clear she is, I was able to make incredibly beautiful ornaments if I do say so myself. <laughs> so here they are. I have them in this bin. Ooh, teaser. <laughs> um, they're just, it's just a plastic shoe bin that's lined with some um, acid-free tissue paper. I keep a lot of our Christmas ornaments in bins like this. And so these guys got their own bin. And so let's just start from the top. Some of these you have seen before. I think I got up through day four um, before I quit making videos. <laughs> And then I finished all of them while I was kind of taking my little leave of absence. So we're going to start with day one, which you have seen before, but since it's been a while, day one, we have a partridge. And then I'll get a little closer so you can see the design. And then the back says number one. And that's a cute little partridge. And then there were a couple of days, I think three days out of the 12 that came with a bonus ornament. And day one was one of them. We have a pear. Because it's a partridge in a pear tree, right? So I'll come up closer. Day one, little leaf, so cute. And then it says number one on the back as well. So that is our other 
first day of Christmas ornament. Those two. Second day of Christmas is our turtle dove. Let's find our turtle dove. Here it is. Second day of Christmas is our turtle dove. Let's see if you can see. Here's this little bead at the bottom to be the feet. Really beautiful. I love. She's this the folk art style that she used for these is just beautiful. And on the back, oh, on that rear wing, we have the number two. So there's two wings and they're stitched on. So that's our second day, two turtle doves. Then we have our French hen, which you guys know is one of my favorites of the whole series. It's so cute. <laughs> Here's our French hen, third day. So this was actually the second French hen I made. The first one that I made, I wasn't super happy with it. Um, and so my mom volunteered for it to be her French hen when I made her set. And I and I made a second French hen and that's this one and I'm much happier with it. You just, you kind of learn as you go along. You learn what works and what doesn't. Um, but the embroidery on the wing is so beautiful. And I love the little neck ruffles. I mean, it's just beautiful. These are little pipe cleaner feet. And then the back side says number three. One thing that I did change with this ornament, I didn't change anything. Um, in her pattern, she recommends just gluing these layers onto the green felt, just gluing them along and then stitching around when you assemble it. I found that I needed some stitching. So you'll see, I actually stitched the blue. You can see in between every ruffle, there's a little stitch I took. Um, to stitch them down and I was happier with it. So that's what I mean. Like for some of you, maybe just gluing is gonna work great and some of you are gonna find it's not holding strongly enough like I did. So anyway, that's the French hen. So, so cute. Third day. Fourth day is the collie bird. Four collie birds. This one is so pretty. the colors. I'll go, I'll talk more about the particular colorway I chose. Um, but so beautiful. Look at this on the tail. Like, gorgeous. And then the back side, number four. Again, two wings stitched onto the bird. So that's, that's the four collie birds. And it is collie, not calling. Who knew? I learned this while doing this project because she talks about it. It is technically four collie birds, which is apparently what they called them in the Middle Ages when the song was first written. Okay, then we have number five, gold ring. Five gold rings. Yes, five gold rings. This one is my boy's favorite. They're obsessed with this gold ring. They kept coming into my craft room and like putting it on their little wrists like a bracelet. <laughs> they love this one. So pretty. I love how she did this with the other color to make it look, um, I mean, it is three dimensional, but make it look even more three dimensional. Yeah, she's so clever. And there's the back, number five. You can see those little bands are just stitched on. Everything is sewn or glued um, and just whip stitched. There's the only stitches in this whole project are whip stitch, running stitch, back stitch, and French knots. And so if you can do those, you can make these. So cute. So that's the fifth day five gold rings. Sixth day, six geese a laying. They're all hooked on each other. Here is day six. Six geese a laying. And with this one, I did add a white sequin behind the French knot for the eye because this dark, um, dark kind of 
teal fabric it, the dark the black eye was getting kind of lost in it and she recommends that in her pattern um but yeah look at that wing how beautiful and then we have the little nest so cute it's just this little squishy oval with these spiky ruffles on it so we have six geese -a laying it's getting a little bent up shape there we go six geese -a laying here's the back side number six colors are amazing and here that was one of the days that had an extra so here is an egg for six geese -a laying very simple number six so that one had an extra that's how come this all counted it turned out to be 15 ornaments instead of 12 because three of the days had an extra okay then day seven we have the swans a swimming seven swans a swimming so pretty and then the back side number seven just beautiful just beautiful I love this little flower out of felt you see so pretty so that's the seventh day and then we were done with birds <laughs> we finished the birds and that meant we had to start making the humans and I will say that I was super intimidated about making the people I was nervous because the birds are very forgiving People, if they're not done right, can look kind of weird. So I was nervous. I didn't need to be. She gave great instructions, tells you exactly how to do it, and they turned out beautifully. So here's day eight. Eight maids of milking. There's my milkmaid. I love her little cap. It's embroidered on both sides. And then... Her skirt says number eight. And her skirt is not attached to her legs, so you can kind of fluff it a little bit so it doesn't look quite so flat. But, And she does say you can also like shove some stuffing up into the upper part of her skirt to kind of poof it out a little bit. I haven't done that. I might do that in the future. But anyway, that's eight maids of milking. She's gorgeous. Look at the colors and the embroidery. So pretty. That's eight maids milking. And then her original, apparently the original numbering of the song back when it was first written in the Middle Ages um, goes eight, eight maids of milking, nine drummers drumming, 10 pipers piping, 11 ladies dancing, and 12 lords a-leaping. However, I learned, I grew up singing and learning the modern numbering, which is eight maids a-milking, nine ladies dancing, 10 lords a-leaping, 11 drummers drumming, and 12 pipers piping. And so since there are two different ways to number the song, she actually has on her Etsy shop a $2 supplement pattern, which I purchased that has the modern numbering. So I'm going with the modern numbering, but just know that her original patterns um, without buying the supplement have the original numbering, like the medieval numbering. So my number nine is my ladies dancing. And this is my other favorite. This one and the, uh, the French hen are my hands down favorite. Here is my lady dancing. Hold on. Their heads are on um, pipe cleaners, and so well, they, she got a little bent out. There we go. So here is my lady dancing. Look at her skirt. Could you die? Look at how beautiful she is. Her little headband with the flower, and then she has a, a black pipe cleaner bun. <laughs> Isn't that cute? And her little cross feet because she's dancing. And then number nine on the back of her skirt as well. So she's my other favorite. 
her little bodice and the the embroidery on her skirt is just amazing and I love the colors. So this is my lady dancing, her demure little face. <laughs> so that was day nine. Day 10 is Lords a Leaping and this one had an extra pattern as well. This is the last one. 10 Lords a Leaping. This was the hardest one to make. And that's because this is the only, this pattern had like the legs are like separate from each other. And actually you can kind of adjust them a little bit. Um, he was the most challenging one, but in her original pattern, he is day 12. He's the last ornament you make. And so I think her thinking was, you know, by the time you get to this guy, you've made quite a few and you should be okay. Um, his arm needs to be a little out. There we go. Um, so what I just did is I made him last. <laughs> he was by far the hardest, but he's so cute. Look at his face. He has a little like lock of hair, black pipe cleaner, and then his little top hat is so sweet. So, oh, and on, um, the back of his coat is where it says number 10. So here's my Lord a leaping and he was the trickiest to make, but again, you just go slowly and you follow her instructions and you succeed. He has little, like, I love his little like ruffles coming out of the bottom of his coat sleeves around his hands. So that's our um, Lord a leaping. Doo, doo, doo. Doo, doo, doo. And then he came, that pattern came with an extra one because the Lord loves the lady. It came with a little heart. So this is also day 10. Little folk art heart. And then on the back, it just says number 10. So that was the extra pattern for day 10. Two more, two more. Then we have 11 Pipers Piping. <laughs> Look at how cute he is. Let's get his, there we go. Gotta get his trumpet in front of his mouth. Also very beautiful. He says number 11 on the back of his coat. His coat has like a little placket with buttons. I mean, they're French knots, but you know. Um, and then I love his hat. He has this jaunty hat with a little felt feather. Um, and you shove stuffing up into the front of his hat and leave the back empty. So it creates this uh, shape. I can't remember what this shape is called historically, but it's so cute. <laughs> I love his hat <laughs> and his little beard goatee thing just really cute so that is day 11 11 pipers piping and then the last one is 12 drummers drumming his mustache <laughs> oh he's so cute here's his drum his drumsticks are made with toothpicks that I just colored um, red with my fabric pen. And then it says number 12 on the back. I also love his hat. I have a thing for their hats. All of the hats are so cute. It has a little pom-pom you make out of a piece of felt that you roll up. Isn't that cute? Oh, so adorable. So those are my 12 days of Christmas felt ornaments designed by Larissa Holland. Here they are. Um, I love them. I am so pleased with how they turned out. I am just tickled. Um, and I loved making them. I absolutely loved it. I, I wasn't sure if I was going to want to make more of them when I finished. So I didn't promise anybody anything. And then I finished my set and I was like, okay, I will make a set for everyone because they are really fun to make. 
Um, by the end, I could finish one in about two and a half days. Um, you can't do them like you can't complete one in one day, even if you sat there for hours and hours because you have to let the glue dry. There are certain steps that the glue has to be dry before you can move on. And so sometimes, you know, I would do a little, a couple hours of work in the morning and then I do the soaking off or letting glue dry. And then I'd come back to them in the evening or the next morning. So each one took me, oh yeah, about two and a half days by the time I got to the end with the more complicated humans. With these kind of guys, you could finish one in these in one day. The only thing that um, necessitates waiting is soaking off the stabilizer, the pattern stabilizer, which I'm gonna talk about. So they are quick. They are quicker than cross stitch. Um, you can finish, you know, finish this in a month. You could do all of these in one month if you really worked hard. Um, and yeah, I love them. Okay, let's talk about the patterns. So when you purchase the patterns on Etsy, you have a couple different options. You can purchase them individually, you can purchase them in groups of four, I think, or you can purchase them all together. I just bought them all together. It was around $75 for all um, 15 patterns, which I felt was very, very fair. This is her original colorway, which is not the one I chose to do, and I will talk about the colorway in a minute when we talk about materials. Um, but you purchase the pattern, and it comes with everything you need. For example, here's day one, partridge and pear. She talks about to make this project, you'll need all of these things. Please note, she has some helpful hints. And then you get into the instruction portion. She shows you how to cut things out, how to do the embroidery. I'm just gonna flip through how to do all the embroidery step by step, um, how to make all the different pieces. Here's all the embroidery finished. How to, excuse me, how to make the beak, how to assemble it, how to make the little like feather at the top. And then all the way down to how to add the hanger um, she gives some instructions on doing whip stitch, back stitch, French knots. She has very clear like photo illustrations of how to do a French knot. And then um, that, and then she has the pattern page. And then we go to Turtle Dove. So you can see that is for one of her most simple ornaments and it's like eight pages of instructions. So you can imagine when you get up to the people, I mean, there were some that was like 12, 13 pages of instructions um, for assembling them. And you could absolutely just use your iPad. Um, you wouldn't have to print all of this out. I chose to print it out because I am a hard copy girl. I just prefer to have it on paper in front of me. But if you are comfortable with working from a tablet or an iPad or a computer, you absolutely could. Um, couple of things that I got from her blog. Let me see if I can find them. Nope. Okay, so what I got from her blog were detailed instructions on the particular colorway that I chose, as well as a comprehensive list of materials. So, set that aside. From her blog, um, you can find this page, the 12 Days Ornament Series Comprehensive List of Materials. This will tell you everything you need to buy to make all 15 ornaments. So this was extremely useful. I took this with me um, to the craft store. Um, I wrote on the back, I had another copy of this that I just wrote, scribbled all over, that I wrote all the different DMC colors I was going to need. Um, yeah, you can see an extremely comprehensive list. And there is the colorway that I used. So you can see the difference. Here's her original colorway. And here's the colorway that I chose, which again, I'll talk about. So this was from her blog. And then I also went ahead and made myself reference sheets for this particular colorway. So these images were on her blog. I just copied and pasted them into a, a Word document and then copy and pasted the instructions she gives about 
what colors of felt to use body you use merlot for the beak you use deep pink for the wing you use cerise the breast turquoise the beard shrimp so she tells you exactly what colors of felt to use where and then what colors of dmc embroidery you're gonna need and i printed out one of these for each of the 12 days these sheets are not available on her blog all of this information is available in a blog post, but rather than try and print out um, 12 blog posts with all of the extra stuff that comes, I just made myself little reference sheets and I printed them out in color so that I could reference them as I was going along. But all of this information I will link down below and it's all available for free on her blog post. So just know if you choose to use this colorway like I did, there are extensive instructions on her blog, um, so you don't need to try and figure it out yourself from like pictures that are posted. Okay, let's talk about materials. Let me just put those away. I also made print out copies of everything because like I said, I'm gonna make like a bajillion sets of these and it's just easier to have it in a binder than to try and be always using my iPad. Um, a couple of things you're gonna need. Obviously, first and foremost, you're gonna need your felt. She has two um, recommended options and two recommended sellers for the two different colorways. For the original colorway, she recommends um, an Etsy shop called Benzie Designs, which sells wool blend felt, um, which is the kind of felt used for most like felt crafting. It is a blend of wool and I want to say like rayon. Um, there are many different kinds of wool blend felt all in different percentages of how much wool to how much synthetic. Um, all you know all are better than the craft store felt you're going to get at like Joann's or Hobby Lobby which is usually 100% acrylic and which is very thin and which stretches out of shape very easily and it pills and it's just Mm, don't don't use it not if you're going to spend the time to make these so this is the wool blend felt colorway from benzie design and um i will link that etsy shop as well benzie design still sells like a, a felt bundle for making the 12 days of or um, 12 days of christmas ornaments and then the second colorway which is the one i chose which was all the jewel tones um, come from a shop on Etsy called Felt on the Fly. And Felt on the Fly is 100% pure merino wool felt. It is more expensive than the wool blend felt. Like, let's just say that right from the beginning. To purchase all the felt for this project, I bought the like bundle from Felt on the Fly on Etsy, and it was about $130 for all of the felt. So, if you choose the 100% wool felt, just know it is more expensive. However, it is glorious to work with. Sorry, um, I have worked with wool blend felt before and it's great. It works so much better than the drugs or the um, craft store felt. It is wonderful. This was the first time, these are all my scraps, this was the first time I ever worked with wool blend felt and I'm never ever going back. It is very thick. You can see how thick it is. So it is thicker than, um, than most other felts. It's super sturdy. You cannot stretch this out of shape. It just will not move. Um, which is really important when you're making ornaments like this and you're working with tiny little pieces and you have to kind of tug and manipulate. If they're going to stretch out of shape, it's going to be bad news. It's so soft. It's, it's wool. So it's, you know, a little scratchier than if it was like silk, but it is so soft and, um, that the way it feels in your hand is just, I just love it. So I personally think it's worth spending the extra money to buy the 100% wool felt. I chose to go this route because I just liked the colorway better than the original colorway. But now that I've used 100% wool felt, like I'm, you can see there's, I'm never going back. This is what I had left over. So you will have plenty of felt to finish one set of the ornaments and you'll have plenty left over to make more additional sets. Um, 
I will say that the one color that I ran out of the fastest was the gold. I only got one sheet of gold and I ran out of it. In fact, I ran out of it and I had to change the colorway of my maid that was milking. <laughs> Let me show you. I had to change the colorway of my milkmaid. Her dress, her skirt was originally supposed to be gold. I didn't have enough gold to make her dress gold. I had enough gold to do everything else, but I did not have enough gold to make her skirt gold. So I made her skirt this red orange color. So I had to switch around her colorway. I used the same colors that were called for in the original pattern. I just moved them to different parts of her outfit. Um, so I ran out of gold in the uh, set that they sent me. I don't know if that's a mistake. I don't know. I mean, I got everything that, that I was supposed to receive, but I did not feel there was enough gold. So you may want to purchase an extra sheet of gold felt when you order your felt from Felt on the Fly. That being said, um, the three different colorways, um, we have the Sapphire color story, she calls them, the Emerald color story, and the Gold color story. And these, you probably noticed that um, the ornaments each fell into one of those color stories. Um, I added little snips of the felt when it arrived because I didn't think there was any way I was going to be able to remember which color was which. And so I added these little swatches. I just snipped a corner off of each sheet of felt and glued it onto my paper so I could remember which was which. You'll also see I wrote down some DMC equivalents because I was purchasing the embroidery thread. And I did that for all three. There's the emerald one with swatches and DMC numbers. And there's the sapphire one with swatches and DMC numbers. Some of the colors repeat through all three color stories. Some of them repeat through two of them. So there's a lot of cohesiveness. Like they really, she really thought this um, color way through very thoroughly. But that is a recommendation I have. If you do purchase the felt from Felt on the Fly, it's amazing. I have here a little list of some colors I need to order, some additional sheets so that I can make more sets of these um, from Felt on the Fly, but you can see you'll have a good amount of felt left at the end and all of these little scraps, and I'm going to use these scraps for like finishing cross stitch stuff. I'm going to use wool felt to make drums and pin cushions and strawberries and tomatoes, and I'm going to use wool felt to make little flower ornament like now that I have this stuff oh I gotta put that in here too now that I have this I'm gonna use this for more than just my felt ornaments I'm gonna use it for you know my other cross stitching stuff as well so that's all my wool felt you'll definitely need that obviously you will need this stuff this is so genius this is how you um, print out your patterns this is called sulky stick and stitch and ooh, you can see the top it says printable it comes in these eight and a half by 11 sheets so it fits into a regular printer and it is a sheet of um dissolvable stabilizer that is sticky on the back so there's like a paper backing and then this is the the fabric dissolvable stabilizer sorry you can hear my husband giving my boys a shower um and this stuff is critical this stuff is how you print out your patterns, how you cut out your pieces, how you know exactly where to embroider what so that it looks just as perfect as hers do. Um, without this stuff, this project wouldn't be possible. These come in a pack of 12 sheets. I needed a little more than one pack because there are 15 patterns. So you're gonna need, um, I think you need about 14 sheets of this. Just to show you what it looks like after you print it out, I printed out a few extras. Here is the gold ring pattern printed out on the sulky stuff. And so then what you do is you cut it out, you peel off the backing, you stick it directly onto your felt, you cut out your shape, you do your embroidery through the pattern. So you, you know, embroider exactly where it tells you to, and then you soak it off. You put it in cold water and you soak off the stuff. And in about 15 minutes, it dissolves away. You rinse it off and you're left with a beautifully embroidered piece of felt 
uh, with no trace of the pattern um, pattern piece left. So that stuff is critical. The sulky stick and stitch, you will need, I needed two packages. You might be able to get away with one if you are more careful than I am. But if you're gonna do the modern numbering, you're gonna need an additional one anyway. So I'd get two packages of this stuff. I found it on Amazon. I could not find this in any craft store. I looked in Hobby Lobby, I looked in Michael's, and I looked in Joann's, and I couldn't find this. So maybe you'll have better luck. Maybe your craft stores will have it, but I had to order it on Amazon. So then we have all of the tools that you'll need. I bought this cute little uh, essentials bin from Walmart. Um, it's pretty handy actually. It has a little top portion that I don't have anything in right now. It's essentially just a caboodle. <laughs> And let me open it up and show you what you will need. Okay. You ready? So in this top level, I have my scissors. I bought myself some special scissors just to use with my felt. A big set. They're just Fiskars. They're from Walmart. They're not anything super special, but these are just for my felt. And these have, I like these. I have another pair of these for fabric use that are black instead of white. And I like that they have the spring action. They're nice. I like that they it's flat along the bottom. So if you're cutting along fabric, they're great. And they have a little clip. So they stay closed. And then I ordered, or I bought myself a pair of little um, snips. And you're going to need these because you do a lot of really fine cutting work on the felt with the little pieces. You could use your embroidery scissors. Those would totally work, like the little fine ones we use for cross stitch. Those would work perfectly. I chose to just buy a pair that were just for my felt and those also um, clip closed. I purchased these at Michael's. They're not good quality at all, but I bought a few little um, wire working tools in the jewelry section and they're mini. They're so tiny, so they fit in my bin very nicely. We have a pair of like wire snips, a pair of um, little needle nose pliers and little twisting pliers that are round. Oops. These, you certainly don't need to have all three of them. You will need the snips and you will want a pair of like needle nose pliers for bending tiny bends in your pipe cleaners. Um, I just thought these are from the brand Bead Landing. They were not, they're not good quality at all, but they work and I didn't have to, you don't use them a ton. And I liked that they were mini, so they fit into my bin really comfortably. In this section, I have some, I have a broken chopstick that I used for stuffing, stuffing my ornaments. I have a pencil. I have a disappearing ink pen for making some marks on the felt. Um, and it worked great. You don't have to use that a whole lot. That one's mostly for the gold ring for getting placement right. You kind of need it. Then you will want some fabric markers. I bought these at Hobby Lobby. Fabric, ball, and brush. They're a double-ended. They're by Marvy. The brand is Marvy. They have the ball tip end, and then they have the brush tip end. Sorry, you can't see that at all. There you go. Brush tip end and ball tip end. And you will use these for doing the faces on the wood beads for the humans. Um, I will say she recommends in her instructions not to use Sharpies because Sharpies apparently bleed on wood. These didn't bleed on me at all. They stayed exactly where I put them on the wood beads. They turned out beautifully. So I recommend um, this brand. I, it worked very well for me. You really only need the black and the red. I didn't use the blue for anything, but they came in a pack of three. So I have the blue in case I ever need it. Um, I used this red to color the, the toothpicks for the drumsticks for the drummer. I mean, use the black a lot. So anyway, you'll need those fabric pens. Then down here we have fray check. I used this mostly on the hangers, the, the hanger loops to kind of keep them nice and sturdy. I have a couple of little binder clips. I used these for clipping things together while they dried. They aren't the best because they pinch a little too tightly. And I think I'd like to someday purchase some of those little quilt clips that everybody uses for quilting. Those are probably better than these, but these little tiny binder clips worked 
worked well enough. So I used those to hold things together while it was gluing. I bought this tiny adorable thing of um, Aileen's tacky glue for doing all of my gluing because it would fit in my box. And I basically used up one, there's a tiny bit left in here, but to make all 15 ornaments, I basically used up one um, tiny mini Aileen's tacky glue. So they're really cute. I think I found this at Hobby Lobby as well. And it's adorable. And that just fit right in there. You will need some pins for pinning stuff while they dry. You will need embroidery needles and they need to be sharp embroidery needles. You can see the ones that I was using. I just stuck through the paper. Um, the needles that we use for cross stitching are not going to work because they don't have a sharp tip. So you'll need embroidery needles. This is the silver DMC pearl stuff that I used for making the hanging loops. So that's just in there. I have a packet of little blue uh, not blue, little wood beads. These are the small size. These are for the hands of the people and the feet of a couple of the birds. Um, so you'll need this small size. These are eight millimeter wood beads. These I found on Amazon, a big bag of them. You will need an awl. An awl is for punching a hole in your felt without needing to cut it. Um, you will need this for a couple of, of the projects. And so I just found an awl and I keep it in my bin. Some silver sewing thread. This is for sewing the hanging loops onto the felt ornaments. And then I have some toothpicks and a pipe cleaner folded in half. And this was for Spreading glue, you need toothpicks to spread glue. What I would do is this came with these extra little plastic dividers. This this box, this caboodle came with these extra little plastic dividers. And you can see, I just would put a drop of Aileen's on here and then use a toothpick to get some and move it onto my felt because you don't want a lot of it. Um, so you need toothpicks for spreading glue, but also this one's red because I would slide the small beads onto it and color them on the toothpick. It was much easier to do that. And this was for the same thing with the human heads. While I was drawing with a pencil, the face marks and then coloring it in with the marker, I would slide the bead onto here so I could hold it. And it was so much easier than trying to hold it with my fingers. A pipe cleaner folded in half is my little head holder. That's everything in this second row. Third row, bottom, I have a selection of sequins. I just found this at Michael's. I needed the white to make the eye of the swan and I didn't, or no, the, the goose, the goose Elaine. Um, I didn't want to buy like a huge bag of one color because I'm probably never going to use them. But this one came with this nice assortment in little bins, little, little um, holders. And so I thought this was useful. Here's all of my DMC. I put them on baggies and put them on a ring with um, um, index cards in there. This was easiest for me. The skein goes on one side and then the back side has all the extra threads as I was using them. She tells you exactly how many strands to use, but this is all the DMC. I have a set of just regular like Walmart black pipe cleaners for the hair on a couple of the people. Then these are the special pipe cleaners you use for construction. These are actual pipe cleaners for like cleaning a pipe. Um, I had to buy these on Amazon. I couldn't find them anywhere else. They are made with 100% cotton rather than acrylic or nylon or polyester or whatever most pipe cleaners are made out of that you find at like a regular craft store. And the other thing about them, not only are they 100% cotton, but they are stronger. The wire, you can see, the wire is much stiffer and stronger. So they work better for construction um, where you put, you know, wire inside of a piece so that you can bend it into shape. So these I found on Amazon. They're just six inch in length um, cotton pipe cleaners that are actually for cleaning pipes. <laughs> like that is like a pipe that you smoke that my grandpa smoked. That is what these are and you will need those. Then the last thing you'll need 
This I also bought on Amazon, and these are the heads. These are the wood beads that make the heads of your people. They are much larger. I think they're 20 or 25 millimeter, maybe 15. I can't remember. Her instructions tell you what size to buy, but I just found them on, on Amazon, um, and they came in a little little pouch. So that is the last thing you'll need are the wood beads for the heads. And that is what is in my felt bin. With this bin and the felt here, I can do everything I need to to make the ornaments. I didn't need any other materials. Everything I needed was right there. Um, more, most important thing is going to be your silky stick and stitch, your good scissors, good sharp fine scissors, good glue, go with Aileen's, always go with Aileen's, good glue, and uh, a sharp needle. And if you have those things, you can basically make them. The, all the rest of the stuff is helpful and useful, but like those are like the crucial things. So good, sharp, fine pair of scissors, good glue, sharp needle, um, and the silky stick and stitch. Oh, I forgot to mention with this, highly recommend printing on with a laser printer, not an inkjet. I made that mistake with my very first um, one. I printed it on my parents' inkjet printer. We were staying with my parents at the time. Um, and it bled, the ink bled when I soaked off the stabilizer, the ink bled a tiny bit onto the white embroidery thread. None of the other threads showed any sign of ink, but the white turned more kind of grayish. So then I went down and copied onto, with, an, with a laser printer, onto this stuff and we have a laser printer here at our house so that's what I use for the rest and had no problems. So when you are printing or copying your silky stick stick and stitch pattern pieces, highly recommend you use a laser printer or a laser copier and not an inkjet. Just from my personal experience. That is everything you need to know. That is my felt ornament experience. I loved doing it. I am looking forward to making more sets for my parents and my siblings and other friends and family members. Um, it was a great experience. I absolutely loved it. I want to make all of Larissa Holland's felt ornaments now. I want to make her Santa Claus ones. I want to make her Christmas Carol ones. I just want all of them. Um, and you'll see when you go check them out. So I will link her stuff down below. Be sure to go check them all out. And if you decide to start this project, please tell me, leave a comment and let me know. Um, if you have questions, I'm always available by email. I'd be happy to answer questions, but you probably won't need me because like I said, her instructions are absolutely spectacular. So that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you for joining me for this special edition video. I will hopefully be back next week with a regular um, cross stitch update. But in the meantime, take care guys and happy stitching. Bye.